All right, Chris, let's start with this here. Two games in, one preseason game left this Sunday night against Washington. What's the energy like in an NFL locker room at this time of year? I, I imagine it's different for different guys, guys who are you know, guaranteed a roster spot or kind of, you know, getting their work in and kind of easing into the season. And there are guys at the back end of the roster who are probably a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious right now. Yeah, it's it, it's a weird vibe in the locker room at this time of year because there's you know 30 40 guys that are hey we're gonna start preparing for the regular season who do we have week one we know this is going to be our team maybe there's some things up in the air on who's the starter or depth charts and that sort of thing but you know and at the end of the day we know we're going to be here let's start preparing for the regular season but then there's the back half of the roster and these guys, I mean, tensions, anxiety, I mean, ex there's so many, that whole bag of emotions <laughs> that's going into, you know, these last couple of weeks that we have here, last couple of days of training camp, preseason game. I mean, and their future is unknown. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that could happen. I mean, even for veteran guys, surprises happen, guys get cut and, and move on. And, um, you know, I just remember it being a very – uh, high stress time of year so you know that it's and you know it right it's like hey this group is going to prepare here this group is going to prepare for the lot for the preseason game and you just it's kind of it's black and white it's like hey all right listen i'm fighting for a spot i'm gonna get a lot of reps in this game i'm gonna be every single thing matters everything everything counts these last three days three four days of camp whatever it is like i'm being evaluated you know like this this is the time where the scouts are not watching the number the one and two right they're not doing that right now they're they're letting those guys prepare for the regular season but those three fours and fives like everyone's getting evaluated and it's like hey can this guy help us can are we going to put him on practice squad is he going to be one of those guys you know so it's 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 tough man i mean I, i've been in that spot so many so many times throughout my career um but, you know, we've talked about it, you know, control what you can control, mm -hmm. right? There's no sense in worrying about it right now. You what What's done is done. So you have the practices and the game in front of you and let, just focus on that. There are 31 other teams that are going to be watching these games and 31 other teams that are evaluating every single player. Some scout, if you, if you put good stuff on tape, someone's going to notice and hopefully there's other opportunities. If it's not in New England, then it's in another team and you can continue your career. You know, it doesn't always just like, it's not one and done always for those bottom of the roster guys. And that's okay. You know, so, you know, 53 guys can only make the team and then you got a handful of practice squad guys. So someone's going to get cut. And the reality is it could, you can end up being somewhere else. So you just got to focus on yourself, focus on what you can do in these games and these practices to get better and to also put some good stuff on tape and, you know, see, see what happens at the end of the day. Guys get cut guys also get traded. We saw a big deal this <sighs> past week in new England, Matthew Judon goes to Atlanta. I still think this front seven can be really good, but the margin for error when you subtract Judon and you subtract Barmore for an undetermined amount of time, the margin for error gets very, very slim vis-a-vis -vis health. I think <sighs> that, they cannot afford to lose one of their big guys in that front seven. I think the secondary is in good shape, but I think that that front seven, when you subtract Judon from that group, it's going to be interesting to see how they manage moving forward. Yeah, I, I was disappointed in that, to be honest with you. Uh, this guy was clearly a leader in that locker room, spent all year on the sideline, even being injured, you know, coaching these guys up, being there, being a voice. Um, you were really impressed by that, him going on the road last year. I remember yeah, you saying that on because multiple Because it occasions. doesn't – you don't have – you're not required to do that. You know, like maybe Bill wanted him there, right? But that And that could be one thing. But a lot of times, like, Bill's like, dude, you're on IR. Like, you're not – like, you're gone. See you later, bro. Like, get better, get healthy, and then when you get back, you're back. But he was there, man, and – um you know, and then he goes to Atlanta and it's like, hey, I'm not asking for a deal because I haven't played football for them. It's it's like, how, how far off could we have been on a deal yeah. that we had? Dude, the money is there. Like, what do we what? I, I don't know. I was disappointed in that, man, because I think that's a big loss. I really do. I, I know we had guys, interesting. but like we still got a bunch of young guys. What do we I mean, 
we're going to rely on Pep the entire year to like really lead this team. And that's fine. He could definitely do it. He's a voice and he's a, and he's a dog on defense, but you need some guys, man, just to be like that, you know, set the tone. And he was a tone setter. And I, I was struck by how he handled his business and how Devon Godshaw handled his business. Mm -hmm. Godshaw kind of made his statement and said, look, I'm going to let my agent handle this. And Matt, took a different path yeah and and i i wonder if i don't think that's the only reason why he was traded but i wonder if that's part of the conversation yeah yeah i mean who i mean we don't know what's happening behind closed doors um we only know what every you know what you know gerard and all the you know the staff and, and him are saying to the media and to us you know so but and behind closed doors it could have been much different conversations and they might have been way far off and they could have just held their ground and said we're not doing this you were injured last year yada 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 but like again guys get paid also based off of performance but also like their value to the team and mm -hmm. i think that his value to that team was high going into this year and but, you know, it is what it is, right? I mean, disappointed, but he's gone. Got to move on, and and we're going to do with what we got. And we got some – we had some really good players on defense, so I'm not really worried about that. I just – I liked Matthew. I thought he was – I thought he was a really good player. I was very impressed with how much of a leader he was last year, even when, like, things were really crappy. Um, you know, guys like that could easily just be like, F it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to stink. I'll move on next year. But he's like, no, I want to be here. And so, you know, that to me was something, but it is what it is. So you watched some of the first two games, you watched most of the first two games. I'm curious to get your take on how they look right now after two preseason games. I, from my perspective, this team is pretty much as advertised. It's yep. going to be a good defense, competitive defense. I think the defense is good enough to maybe steal them a couple of games if everyone stays healthy, but there are questions on the offensive side of the ball, particularly a tackle and a quarterback. Yeah. That's the what I've taken out of these first two games. Yeah, I think um I mean listen, we we there's a lot of the controversy of, you know, Jacoby's only done this and he threw in there he threw a pick and then Drake comes in and he, you know, does wow and everyone's up in arms and saying, "Oh, we found him." It's like like just pump the brakes a little bit uh this a little bit here because he's yet to play a full real nfl football game and i'm not hating on what he's done i thought he looked good i thought mm -hmm. he made some good throws some good decisions he ran he looked confident in the pocket and but again we talked about it things change on week one things are a lot faster i just i've changed my tune a little bit on this i think that we still go with jacoby mm -hmm. i think that he's done it he's been there he would be ready for it and let's just keep Drake up to speed here. And when the time comes, maybe it's sooner than we thought. Maybe it's in October, right? If Jacoby goes out there and doesn't play well, then all right, like Drake, like, okay, now it's your turn, right? But there's no sense in putting the kid out there in week one and letting him just get pummeled with everything that's going on and how fast the game is, game time decisions, like, Get your mental reps, be, be engaged in the week one, week two, week three, whatever that is. And then like, Hey, when time comes, if we want to make that switch week four, week five, whatever it is, you're ready to go. You've done, you've done it. You've seen it. You've watched the film. You know how to make these decisions in real time. Like, and then let's, then we can see, right. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't see the value in throwing him out there right away. I think the biggest guy with a lot on his shoulders is the OC. Yeah. You know, I think Van Pelt has got a big, he's got some, some real things that he's got to do. And I think that to help that offense and the, you know, the offensive line, the tackles and the young receivers that we have and to help Jacoby or Drake, whoever's in there. I think that the game planning has got to be on point and you got to mix it up and do a lot of different things so that we're not just defenses. Aren't just te <laughs> teeing us up. Right. And we're just we're in that we get into that mode of just relying on our defense to give us field position. Yeah. So um, I, 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 I got faith in Van Pelt. I think he's going to have some really good things lined up. And to be honest with you, I think he's been impressed with his receivers and, yeah. and the playmakers that he has. Get those guys in space, man. Let like give them the ball. Like, let's just pitch and catch here. Take a couple shots, but um, move the ball down the field. Get them in space. See what they can do. 
And then, you know, we'll see what happens. See if we can put some points on the board, right? I agree with you on this point that the process has been accelerated a little bit. Mm -hmm. That I was with you. I think we were of like mind when it came to Drake's development that, look, you don't want to put him in before it's absolutely, you know, you know for sure. And part of that is you want kind of a nice runway to kind of get him up to speed a little bit. But the other thing, too, is that, you know, Brissett is fundamentally an extension of Alex Van Pelt. Mm Mm-hmm. He's the only guy in the op- the only guy in the building who knows the offense not on the same level. So you want to be able to when you're installing a new offense, you want to be able to get a guy like that on the field consistently. Yeah. The other thing too about it, May is that the arrows pointed in the right direction. Yep. Since last Thursday. Yeah. But you want to make absolutely sure because you when you put him out there, you don't want to have to yank him back. Dude, if it's you, the freaking preseason. Yeah. Yeah, He's you, seeing you, cover three, yeah. cover two, cover four. Man, there's no multiple blitzes, man zone. Re- like, we're not talking about that. Week one, that shit is coming, right? And if you put Drake out there, it's going to be a freaking field day of blitzes just to see if he can handle it. And you don't need, you don't want to do that to the kid, right? Let Jacoby handle it. He's seen it, right? And if Jacoby messes it up, like, all right, let's go back, watch the film. And Drake, like, again, mental reps are huge. Like, see it, all right? The, they rolled here. They did this. They went from man to zone. They they sent the corner. Like, you got to be able to see all these things in real time. And like you said, like, we don't want to do week one, week two, and then have to yank them. Like, that just – we've seen what that does to quarterbacks, <laughs> right? And we don't need – let's not get into this, you know, rotating wheel of, like, all right, who we drafted next year because yeah. he, he didn't yeah. make it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I just, I, my initial thought was, look, he's going to play by the end of the year, but yeah. what we've seen over the last few days makes me think that, Hey, you know, maybe Halloween, sure. Maybe mid October, maybe early yeah. October, depending on his development. It's just, he he's moving quicker through the system. The arrows point in the right direction. He's got to keep stacking days, but yep. it's there, there's reason for optimism there. Long-term yeah, everyone, optimism. Everyone's excited about what he's yeah. done in the preseason. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's positive, right? Yeah. And there was a, you know, he had a couple of days in camp where things weren't great. And all oh, we, you know, got people saying that's the next Mac Jones and all this. And I think that's just a bunch of crap, you know, like we had, we hadn't even seen the kid play and he went out and he performed well. Like that's what we wanted to see, right? We've always, we talked about just progressing, right? right? That's what we've talked about from day one when we drafted the kid is like, you just need to just continue to progress, stack the days, learn the offense, learn how to be a pro. And I think I think we both have kind of sped up that timeline a little bit. I could see him coming in in October. Like, absolutely. It's interesting you bring up the idea of, you know, the, the Mac Jones comparison. And, and I mm-hmm. goof on that. But it, it's interesting that he came over to us, Drake, that is, the, you know, a couple days later. And we asked him about that rough performance. And he said, well, you know, we, we were out there working on third and long. Third and long in the NFL is tough. Yeah. Us sitting up on the hill, we're looking at passes. We're, we're charting the numbers and we're saying, oh, well, he's, you know, he's one for five. That's awful. That's horrible. Yeah. We don't know the context of those statistics. No. Can it be frustrating sometimes, not that you're reading the newspapers or listening to sports talk radio, but can it be frustrating sometimes as a player to go through that process when the people who are on the outside evaluating you don't know the full context of the situation. Yeah, of course, man. I mean, that's, but that's part of being a professional, right? Like that there's no, there's not, not, no one's going to completely understand the full context of, unless they're in the meeting rooms with, with us and knowing exactly what we're working on one for five in the NFL and third and long is actually not terrible. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like percentage wise, when you look at third and 10 plus third and 15 plus, like if you're completing one out of five of those, like, I, like I'm taking that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's, those are hard passes to complete. And yeah, I mean, listen, it's frustrating, but I think you have to just understand that there, there are people that are outside looking in and, and they have to do their job as well. And they might not know the full context of it, but you have to remain professional and be like, yeah, like, listen, we didn't complete it. We're working on it. We're going to get better. And these are situations that are going to come up in a game. And I'd rather make the mistakes now in practice than in a a real-time situation. Were you ever in a situation where you wanted to come over and yell at us and just be like, look, you don't know what's going on here. You don't know the full context. You know, you're watching, but you don't really understand what's going on in this moment. Um, uh, You know what? I mean, I've 
I've had a, a few moments. Um, you know, there's like, I mean, one in particular that sticks out in my head um, where it's like I was coming off an injury, you know, was not really getting much done. And I said, the guy, I mean, I forget his name. I, I don't even want to say his name if I remembered it, but I mean, he basically was like, what, what's the point of you being out there? <laughs> and it was like one of those moments where you have to just take a deep breath and just be like, Hey man, like, I'm just trying to get better and I'm trying to do what's best for the team. Bill coached us so well on that kind of stuff. And to be honest with you, I never wanted to be that guy. I was always a team guy and people are always going to criticize me as a player, where I came from, what I was doing. But at the end of the day, I knew what I was capable of. And was I perfect? No, with that, not, not in the slightest, but I did go out there and do try to do my best every single time I stepped on the field. And that's all that I really cared about. We're going into the last preseason game. And I think when you were around, they played four, right? Yeah. And now it's three. What is, and you've been on both sides of this. We've referenced this before, but I'm curious, what is it like on the sidelines in, in just the, the overall energy, the atmosphere of that last preseason game? Because we've seen guys out there playing for their professional lives yep. in the fourth quarter of the final preseason game. We also see, veterans on the sidelines eating sunflower seeds yeah you know for for you know both sides of the equation what is that last game like um i think it's again i've uh you i've been on both sides that for let's talk about the the i'm fighting for my life side right you you're going into this game i mean this is this is your super bowl this is your plan. This is could be your last game in the NFL. And I I don't see a problem with looking at it like that because it very well could be. And you know that you're going into this game. You are going to get 90% of the reps. You're going to be playing offense, special teams, doing all the things. There are no, I'm tired. There is no, there is no this. Like, can I get a break? Because there is no one else, right? There might be three, four guys in your spot and you guys are playing the whole game. And like, approach it like that like dude this is a freaking phenomenal opportunity to go out there get evaluated you're going to get so many reps so many opportunities and it could be a game it could be a, a career changing moment for you right go out there ball out during a game and be like wow let, yeah let's keep the kid right mm -hmm. or you might just change someone's perspective on like oh we had a we had this guy that we're not so sure about but he came out and performed well on all phases of special teams, <laughs> offense, whatever we asked of him, he did. No mental errors, any of that kind of stuff. So study the game plan. Don't make any mental errors. Take advantage of the opportunities. Play 100% every single time. You're, if you drop a pass as a receiver, you miss a block, miss a tackle, like move on. Like we're no, there's no head hanging, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to see that because that's being evaluated. Show up, do the things right. As a veteran guy, just freaking be there for your guys that are fighting for your life right just show up man i mean listen yeah. i get it right i've been there too sneakers are on hats are on the sideline cups full of sunflower seeds you know we're just kind of you know bsing on the sideline with the guys that are going to be there but like be excited for those guys man because like maybe you weren't there but i was right and i was always i knew those guys and i was always I wanted to see them do well. There's, there was always the, the biggest part of me wanted to see those guys go out when I was in that position, watching them play was I want to see them be successful. So be excited for those guys. If they make plays, be excited, jump, you know, get, jump up and down because that's, they can feed off that energy, man. And that's, that's important. And that's part of the process of being a professional and helping the younger guys, this younger generation of players coming up, like, being there, being supportive and helping them along their career. Because at some point you were in those shoes. And I would hope that maybe a veteran was doing that same thing for you. So just be present. Like we know that your head's somewhere else. And we know that, you know, you're either a thinking about like, you know, what movie you're going to watch on the plane ride home or what are you going to eat for dinner after the game? But like, <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I get it. But just be present in that game and get it. And when it's over, great. And then you can move on. And then like, hey, we're focused on week one. And one of the most underrated on. things. I honestly, one of the most underrated things about the preseason is when a third or fourth string guy 
makes a play along the sidelines and you see the whole sideline explode. Yes. You know, you see an energy guy like Dietrich yes. Wise or, or Jabril Peppers, <laughs> you know, jump up and down. You'd yes. love to see something like that. Exactly. I, and I think this locker room kind of has that group of guys that they're going to be out there. They're going to be present. Those guys are going to be excited. You know, guy makes interception, big tackle, big play on the sideline. You, you, I think you'll see a lot of that. And I think Gerard, I think being coming from an ex player, I'm sure that he's going to coach these guys up be like, listen, for my starters, for those guys that are going to have the baseball caps on, like we, I get it, but let's be present. Let's be, be, supportive high energy on the sideline. Cause like these guys are fighting for their life, man. And that day after that preseason game ends is easily one of the worst days in, in the national football league. You know, it is tough, man. And for surprisingly enough, I feel like it's always raining. Yeah. It's always the, it's always a cloudy day. You know, I, don't, I can't remember a day that I was cut where it was sunny. <laughs> well no actually my first time in san francisco it was beautiful outside but <laughs> other than that it's always like it just seems like there's always a cloud just around there right but it's, that's tuesday at tuesday at four yeah is so the tuesday deadline that you have was... to be at 53 you go to from 90 to 53 and there's some guys in this game who might not necessarily be playing for their professional lives but there's some let's just call them crowded depth charts yeah. specifically in the wide receiver room oh yeah at least in my mind, when we sit here right now on Tuesday, August 20th, mm -hmm. you know, seven days out, you're, you, you think you, you know, it's Kendrick Bourne. Yep. It's the two rookies, Polk and Baker. Yep. And Pop Douglas. Yep. And probably a guy who has played his way into Luce. a secure spot in my mind is KJ. Or KJ. Yeah. I've, I've read about that. Yeah. KJ Osborne. So yeah. you have a handful of guys, Kayshawn Booty. Jalen Rager, who I think has a good shot because he has special teams value, and Tyquan Thornton. And then there, there's there, there's some others who are, you know, past that on the depth chart. Yeah. How do I you mean, listen, this? all those guys are going to get – I feel all every single one of those, maybe not Pop mm -hmm. and maybe not KJ, but I think KJ probably will get some return work. Mm -hmm. um, I I would see both rookies playing at mm -hmm. least the first first quarter, maybe a little bit more of this game. Um, you know, I would, you know, I think KJ gets some work. I don't think that they're going to put pop out there. Um, Butte for sure. I mean, I, I think that there's really, you know, we haven't seen enough of all these guys in, in real time game like situations. I think they're going to want to see, yeah. you know, put some different groupings of guys out there, you know, see how they do put them in a different situation, put them in a different spot, see how they perform, see how they react to different things. Um, because again, it's, yeah, that's the third preseason game. But as a rookie or a young guy, like we, you still need to keep progressing. And these are valuable. These are reps that you can get in game time where this can help you going into the preseason or into the regular season, into week one. So do it. Go out there. If it's a quarter, great. If it's a series, great. Go out there and play your ass off and then move on, support the rest of your guys. Two wide receiver notes for you that I think you might find interesting. First of all, they did the rookie slip and slide on Sunday. <laughs> it wasn't quite a, a rookie. They did, they did first and second year guys because they didn't do it last year. And all the, yeah. you know, like Mayo went through and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baker went through and he was pissed. <laughs> he was pissed. <laughs> he spent the next like half hour like toweling himself off. Oh, man. He walked over to get new cleats. And it just kind of reminded me of the conversations we've had him, you know, about him before where he's just like, you know, that there, there's that little edge to him. Yeah, he's got you know, it. that yeah. you love to see from like a competitiveness standpoint. But he was he was just he was pissed. It was, it was funny to watch up on the hill to kind of see him kind of, you know, have to deal with it and yeah. kind of go through practice and, you know, kind of you know, face all the adversity that, that that comes with, you know, getting soaking wet at the start of practice. So yeah, I mean, second thing is, man, I got your guy, David Wallace. There's a little bit of Chris Hogan there. Oh, yeah? In that kick returner. He doesn't quite have that extra gear, but he, after two weeks in the preseason, led the league in the preseason. I know. Kick he's, return he's, yardage. He's switching but, switching the football in hands as he's running, and I yeah. see it, and I was really pissed about that when I saw yeah. it. I was like, oh, that's a fumble in the real game. Yeah. But, but no, but I did he, see. He's a guy who, yeah. for me, he's followed that template for you, where it's yeah. just like, just do whatever. Yeah. Special teams, he's out early catching punts 
he, for me, is a guy who, when we get a chance to go out to practice on every Wednesday over the course of the regular season, he's going to be wearing the different penny every single sure. week on the yep. scout team. You know, running, you know, running downfield is, you know, Jalen, you know, Jalen that's a, Waddle. for that's a for sure practice squad guy right there. Yeah. Development yeah. guy. Let him kind of keep he's it seems very raw in his ability, but can do a lot of different things. And he and has got, you know, got a motor, right? He's going to give you every single he's going to give you everything he has every single yeah. play. So that's a guy that I would want on my football team, because when it comes down to the regular season, those practice squad players are are so important and being that look squad and giving good looks to the card like that is so important man and it's also a very very valuable time for you to work on your game and to get better i mean those practice squad years that i had in buffalo and miami were easily the most important years of of my career i i became such a better receiver doing those and going against number one number one corners safeties and and deep you know like that helped me so much because you got to do different routes and you got to, there's a little bit of freedom there. Cause it wasn't, you weren't, you know, you didn't maybe have to outside release or inside release. You kind of be able to mix it up. And it, it, it was uh, th- those reps for those guys getting into the regular season are, are very important. And it, it, you know, you're very crucial to how this team is going to perform throughout the year. He's just got it, man. He's yeah. just, he might as well just give him number 15 now. <laughs> just, he just got the look, the style, the whole bit, man. And he just, he, he's got, he's got a way about him where you go, look, this is a practice squad guy. Yeah. This is a classic practice squad player, at least at this phase of his career. You know, who knows what happens two, three years down the road. But it's basically at this point, I was watching him the other day. And basically at this point, it's about survival. Yeah. It's just like not getting hurt in the last preseason game. Yep. Just doing whatever you need to do just falling out as as often as you can whenever you get your opportunity yep. and then you see what happens moving forward yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see this last preseason game what they do uh you know obviously we're probably going to see not much of drake and jacoby but let's see what our boy joe can do here with it. maybe uh maybe a half right i love it I love it. Yeah, let's yeah. see get how him an he does. Extended run. Yeah, I'll get him a little, get him, get a groove. Yeah, you know, get a little momentum. Yeah, you know, get into a, a groove here and let him get a couple of series of going and, and see, see how he does. Right. I mean, I think everyone was impressed with his athleticism and how he, you know, was able to avoid some stuff and run. Like, let's see how he drops back. Let's see how he does in the three step game. You know, let's see if he can make those small or if he just dumps the ball off. You know, like let's let's see let's let's see what we got here. Um, so that that could be exciting to watch for this last game. For Have sure. your expectations changed for this team after the first two preseason games? I, I know we kind of touched on it off the top, but I think this still for me looks like a. I think there's a path to six wins. I, I think, yeah, the- dude. I'm listen. I'm, I'm, we're we're. I got t-shirts in the in the making. We're we're betting the over. <laughs> <laughs> we're betting the over. <laughs> I, I just I think that this team again we're gonna heavily rely on the defense. We've done that for years though. We've had good defenses, but you know also we had a, a really good quarterback, right? I mean that helps. Um, but I just I think that there's a path for this team to go out there and surprise some people, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, it heavily relies on how Jacoby and how Drake play, and that's gonna be. The tale, that's going to be the story. That's going to be the headline for our podcast every single week, <laughs> you know, and we know that, you know, there's going to be some, some other things that we talk about, but it's like, Hey, this is what happened. This is how the quarterback position played. And this is how the game unfolded. And, you know, we either did well here and we were able to put up some points or we didn't. And the, the defense was, they struggled because we put them in bad field position or, you know, throughout the game. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I still am in that seven to eight win category. I think that they're going to be able to really make some surprises. And again, you never know what's going to happen in the NFL. Yeah. It's it, every single week is hard. I don't care who you're playing; it does not matter. And teams don't always show up and play their best. And we could, you know, you know, steal a win. You know, probably not from you know a team like San Francisco, but you know, who knows? AFC East again, I think that you can go to New York and beat the Jets and Buffalo, I have no idea how they're going to be this year. Mm-hmm. I think that's story that's a big headline in the AFC. 
Like, who knows? Like, Josh Allen doesn't have his guys anymore. You know, he, they lost a lot of people. Like, how's this rookie going to be? You know, I have a lot of talk about him, and he seems like he's a very good player, but is he going to be the number one guy there? Like, I don't know. Is Josh going to be able to get him the football? You know, it's uh, So I think there's some stories there for us to talk about. You know, the AFC can still be somewhat of a toss-up, and yeah, the Jets, but the Jets are the Jets, and, you know, that's – They'll be the Jets until they prove prove us all wrong, and that's fine. <laughs> if I'm a Patriots fan, all I want from this season is steady improvement. Yes. I want to yeah. see a team that, look, I know that they're going to get their ass kicked on a handful of occasions over the course sure. of this year. It's gonna, They're going to take their licks. It's going to be a struggle at times. But the idea of improvement over the course of the year, so you get to November and December, and you are competitive and you're winning games. I used this analogy before. I don't know if you remember the 1993 Patriots where they had Drew Bledsoe as a rookie. Yep. Uh, they went, they were pretty bad out of the gate, but they were young, they improved, they won a bunch of games after November. And there was a gradual level of improvement there to a point where they made the playoffs next year. Yep. This, for me, feels the same way. Yep. That you can get through this season with six wins, you know, you can steal a couple games on defense, you're going to win a couple games straight up, and then I just, mean, six, seven wins is, is a... That's a positive season. I mean, yes. that's a, yeah. I think that's, that's good. given last year, given everything that happened last year. Yeah. You know, we also got a rookie head coach also that's going to have to kind of go through some growing pains of making real time decisions in games as well. You know, like that's something that we're not really talking about, but definitely comes up like decision making. What are we doing here? Are we taking a timeout? Are we throwing a challenge flag? Are we going for it on fourth down? You know, these are all decisions that are going to come up very early on in the season that are going to be decisions that are going to kind of shape who Gerard and how he's going to play. And he's going to have to learn from as well. So again, I think we're in that same, you know, six, seven, eight wins is that's a very good season for us. And, and then we move into next year and, you know, again, like let's continue to build on what we have and get some players in here. And then we, you know, who's, if Drake's a quarterback, like let's surround, keep surrounding him with talent and, beef up the offensive line go out into free eight. i mean we're talking about next year already but it's like <laughs> dude go pay a freaking ta left tackle go get like go yeah. let's protect this guy you know and we'll see how these rookies progress on you know at wide receiver but i think that they can be good players and we could have you know the makings of something no one's talking about it but we could have some a good offense in, in a year or two you, you know? got to turn this into a destination spot offensively we yes. saw that with yes. Brandon Ayuk not wanting to come to New England. We saw that with Calvin Ridley not wanting to come to New England. You need to be able to put yourself in a position offensively where uh, an elite wide receiver in free agency says, that's where I want to go. I want to go play with Drake May. I want to go play alongside Jalen Polk and Ramondre Stevenson in that group. I, I want to yeah. be a part of that moving forward. And yeah. the goal this year is to put yourself into that position because then now next offseason – you're projected to have at least four picks in the top 100. You you should have a lot of cap space. Yeah. And you theoretically can have a young quarterback who is ascending. Yep. That's yeah. the I plan. Mean, that's, that's, that's the plan. And that's like the position we want to put ourselves in. Yeah. So you, you want to get there. It's going to take a lot to get to that point, yeah. but you yeah. want to get there. It's going to be a, a, a few steps in between, but um you know i think it's again it's just making progressions all you know all throughout the year and you know like the people that are watching it every single week and and the stuff like you and and myself we're gonna see it and we're gonna know like we're either getting better or we're just kind of hovering in this like this this world that it's just not great and then we just we kind of beat our heads against the wall of like what do we need to change and i think they have what they need right now to be the team that they are and then we just try to look to improve on that, you know, next year, the year after, and the year, and then all of a sudden now we're we're back in comp, you know, competition and the AFC and playoffs, and it's good, man. But you know, you got to see these young guys continue to get better and not get you know thrown off the wheels when you know you have one or two bad games. Like it, it happens, man. Like you're not going to go out there and perform your best every single time, but you know, as long as you can continue to get better and learn from these mistakes that you're going to make, <laughs> then we're in, then we're trending in the right direction. Put out a call on Twitter this morning for a couple of questions. Mm. And uh, we got two here very early. So we didn't get a whole lot, but we got two. Uh, first one 
from Huskies 15 who wants to know why you were so wide open against the Steelers in 2017. <laughs> Because they run cover three and we had, we game plan the hell out of them and knew exactly how to get open. And it was just, they were just one of those teams that I just felt like Josh and Tom just knew exactly what to call. And we just, and we didn't go into all the, like every single time we played them, we didn't go in with the same game plan. We switched it up and moved it around and did different things. But in, in 2017, uh, you know, we just, it, it was just very, we knew exactly what plays to get into. And I credit that's game planning. You know, that was Josh, that was Tom. They knew, they knew how to get us into good spots. And um, yeah, we, the, the, the rivalry that we had between them, you know, when we were there was very, I mean, Bill hated that. It's like, you know, it's, it's we hated them. Right. And, you know, I didn't really know why we hated them, but we hated them. And, we went into the, that was a very those were statement games. So like yeah. you went into those games like this is my Super Bowl and we want to we want to beat these guys bad and and it always felt like that you know whenever we played them. So I credit the uh, the game planning Josh and Tom for people getting wide open in those games. Two things on that it it always felt like the AFC North games in particular mm -hmm. the the Steelers and the Ravens. Oh, like yeah, the Ravens too. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it was, was just there, there was an edge to those there. games, <laughs> and, and then and then it was just to to be able to to go to Pittsburgh and win in Pittsburgh. I've heard guys talk about that before. It just it must have been the most satisfying thing to be able to beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, and to hear Acrisure Field or Heinz Field or whatever they called it back then, just completely silent, was just one of those great feelings. Yeah, I mean, going on the road and winning is great, but going on the road in Pittsburgh and winning is a, a, even that much sweeter. You know, with, with seeing those towels just kind of thrown on the ground and not waving in the air is 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 special. <laughs> Second question we got from Proud Black Matt. What position would Hogan play on defense? I can see him bulking up to play linebacker. I would say, I would say safety. Yeah, I mean, I played, I, corner, safety. I played corner in college. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I didn't play. People don't know this, but I play, I didn't play receiver in college. <laughs> I played on third down and maybe in the red zone, but I started at corner. And this was like after the second game, uh, the head coach came to me. We were struggling on one side and they were like, Hey, can you play here? I'm like, yeah, sure. Great. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so I, I tried out for teams at cornerback and safety. I was a little bit bigger coming out of the draft. So I was like 220. So I was, they worked me out more as a safety. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, that would probably be a position that I play is kind of more, more in that safety position. I, uh, I, I don't think I could put corners a tough position to play, but safety, I could, I could get there. You ever do any no lobbying? No, McCourty, but you you know. Know. <laughs> that's the guy make the chain. That's right. <laughs> you ever, you ever lobby Bill to play on defense? No, no, that, that was, that was definitely above my pay grade to ever come up to Bill and make a suggestion of where, where I could play. <laughs> <laughs> well, did they ever do? Cause I know they did it with, with Troy and they did it with Jules. Jules. Yeah. Uh, there was a time. I mean, we did some different things. I mean, we were pretty lucky, you know, injury wise throughout my career there. I mean, there was a time, you know, where Tom was hurt and then, you know, we had, uh, you know, Jacoby and, and, um, Jimmy. So like Jules was quarterback and then me and him were back there, you know, so we did some like different things like that, but never, never had to play any defense. So it's interesting. You, you t did, did some different things back there. What that was in 2016 as yeah, like an emergency was, situation. Yeah. We had like an emergency. We had a few plays. It was like read option with Jules and, and there was like maybe one or two pass plays with him. Um, but that was a uh, failed experiment. We never had to use it. Thanks, thank God. <laughs> was it? Did just it did, never got off the ground in practice? It just uh, I mean, worked. we did it in practice, but like Jules didn't want to be back there. He didn't want that. That was he didn't want to do it. You know, it's like one of those. You know, he he was done playing quarterback. I mean, he loved he he loved it. He could still sling it, but he'd rather get thrown it and then have to throw it again. Um, yeah, we didn't feel like really doing the read option. I mean, it was like one or two plays. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't anything crazy. Thankfully, we never had to use it. Thankfully, that was a yeah. that was a wild year. That would have yeah. that would have added a whole nother layer to yeah. <laughs> yeah. what was yeah. already a wild yeah. year for you guys. <laughs> All right, Chris Hogan, thank you very much for your time, my friend. Take care, and we will talk again next week when we know 
at least have a, a fairly good idea as to the 53 guys who are on the roster going when into when is uh okay. the last preseason game what last preseason game is sunday sunday, sunday. night the, sunday the, night. The, the patriots and the commanders are the last preseason game on the schedule for the entire national football league and then yeah. tuesday is cut down day and then we start the real fun of the regular season yeah i'm looking forward to it i think sunday will be fun to watch some of these guys compete man it'll be it'll be fun we will talk again next week. All right, Chris. Thanks.